friends. I am extremely happy to introduce to you this morning Swami Shraddhanandaji Maharaj, the head of the Vedanta Society of Sacramento. He is a very respectable monk of our order. <coughs> he joined in the Ramakrishna order in 1930. And he is a disciple of Swami Shivananda, the second president and a direct disciple of Sri Ramakrishna. Swami had great opportunity to know and see and live with personally with several direct disciples of Sri Ramakrishna. Swami Shivananda, Swami Shubhodananda, Swami Akhandananda, Swami Divyanananda, Swami Abhedananda, and Swami Sharudananda. He met many, many direct disciples. Him. And he is a brilliant writer in our language, also in English. He wrote many books in Bengali. And in English, his, his English writing, you will find we have a copy in a, the story of an epoch. The Swami, after his final vows, became the secretary, private secretary of Swami Virajananda, who was a disciple of Kuli Mother and a monastic disciple of Swami Vivekananda, and who was a president of our order also. <coughs> Afterwards, he became the editor of Udbodha magazine, which was started by Swami Vivekananda in 1898. He was a very, very successful editor and a great writer. Then he was sent to San Francisco in 1957 as an assistant of Swami Ashokananda. When Ashokananda died, the San Francisco Center had two branch centers, Berkeley and Sacramento. All centers became independent. So Swami took the charge of the Sacramento Center. From 1970, he is the head of that center. And I have very respect for the Swami because I know him when I was a school boy. And I, he was very affectionate towards me. So in spite of his fragile health, he is 84. And he has some physical difficulties. But when we invited him, he said, last spring I invited him, he said, not now, I am going to visit a few places in Chicago. Boston, New York, Toronto, I shall come to St. Louis in fall. Swami visited St. Louis Center many times. He came, you remember, during the Golden Jubilee in 1988. Then when Swami Prashad Prakashanam passed away in 1979, Swami came to attend the memorial service. And I am really happy that Swami is with us this morning. <coughs> and his topic will be, my God, my all. Swami Shraddhananda. This is all right? Yes. <coughs> they are not taking any video. Video? video? Yes. No escape from video. No. <laughs> <laughs> that takes out the freedom. You, you have your freedom. Om Masato Ma Sadgamaya 
तमसो मोतिर्गम मृत्युरमा मृतंगम आवीरावीर्मयेधी रुद्रा ते दक्षिण मुखम ते ते नीत्यम ते नीत्यम लीड अस फ्रॉम द अनरियल टू द रियल लीड अस फ्रॉम डार्कनेस एंड टू लाइट लीड अस फ्रॉम डेथ टू इमोटैलिटी reveal to us thy resplendent truth and evermore protect us o lord by thy sweet and compassionate face by thy sweet and compassionate face by thy sweet and compassionate face friends i am very happy to meet you i have been as the swami said i have been to st louis many times swami sat prakash ananda had great affection for me even in india he when he came to belur mat he was very sweet and very loving then when proposals were going on for me to come to the west to san francisco swami ashokananda who was a close friend of swami satprakashananda requested him that this swami will be going to the west coast and <coughs> and if he does not like to go his argument is that he had great sympathy for the communists <laughs> and it will not be pleasant for him uh, because that that was the regime when communists were very much oppressed you should say and my sympathies are with them on the best side of communism i i do not uh, approve of their atheism or for anti religious but as a social force and the the quality these things appeal to me very much then swami ashokananda requested when swami sat prakashananda once visited india you know that you will be meeting swami shraddhananda he is not willing to come but he has great respect for you and you also love him and please try to persuade him and coming to america is a blessed opportunity for the followers of vivekananda because swami vivekananda himself spent uh, more than about 4 years in two uh, in installments first he came in 1893 as you know then again he came in uh, 1899 so please try to give him a good picture of america he, he has an obsession that uh, america is uh anti communism and 
but he is not we being uh, uh, the members of the ramakrishna order we we cannot go into politics see let the communists be as they do but what is that to him he is going for uh, the preaching vedanta and so why should he hesitate he should remember the great disciples who came after swami vivekananda swami trigunati to came and uh, swami avedananda came and so he should not hesitate like that try to persuade him a little so one day swami sat prakashananda was staying in the uh, institute of culture and i had to go there for a weekly gita class <clears throat> and so he met him and i saw his uh, two suitcases i think were spread over and many articles were indian articles sarees these that uh, he said uh, you know he was he sometimes he he had a very uh, very boyish temperament like a boy but you see i had gone for shopping and i have brought these things and the devotees there in st louis uh, they would i would present them to each and even if it is an handkerchief indian handkerchief they will appreciate it that is why i uh, i have bought these things for present to the uh, st louis devotees then he came to the point well i hear that you don't like to go to america well america is not a terrible place eh? you will see the same atmosphere you know ashramas in every ashrama you will see devotees you will see the shrine you will hear the music the devotional music we sing here and the american people are very sweet people <laughs> hmm? very generous and very cordial they will receive you uh, very cordially and you would not miss india when you go to the america you will see every ashram has an, uh, an atmosphere of uh, our indian culture so like that he gave me some encouragement and some push that and worked that worked <laughs> so some eventually i had to come to this country in 1957 as the swami said and first i was in san francisco and then i met swami sat prakashananda Uh, in Bellur Motor also on a conference he went and Institute of Culture so this St. Louis Center with his association is very is a, you can call it a sacred a place of pilgrimage for me mm. see and so I am very happy that I had the opportunity and the strength my strength was fast going away for 3 years i was very ill but i do not know why some uh, somehow my health took a good turn and at present i am able to walk uh, and climb steps and uh, meet devotees lecture like this some of my activities i can continue so this morning the subject announced is my god my all this is a a quotation you could say not written quotation but is well known those who have studied the life of saint francis of assisi will remember that he had a friend uh, dear friend who wanted to test saint francis 
all that he is doing and all, whether it is real or fake. He wanted to spend one night with him. In the daytime you, you go here and you, you may pose as a saint, but what happens in the night? What do you do at night time? I want to... Uh, he did not t tell him explicitly, but I want to spend one night in your company. So St. Francis said, all sure, you are always welcome, everyone is welcome. So this gentleman, he went and he had a simple meal. St. Francis's meal was a little stew. <laughs> and he would not, he would tell, address his body. And he used to call his body brother ass. Hmm. So, so someday when his meditation was not deep and the mind was distracted, he would, he would tell his body, my, my body, I won't give you any food to, today because you have not behaved properly. So his food was very simple. He was really a great, great saint. See, you do not fl find any flaw in his character except that he was, he shared the dogmatism of, of the Catholic religion. See, uh, so this friend went to his cottage and that simple meal and then St. Francis says, let us now go to uh, bed. So he had made a bed for him. He uh, lay down there. St. Saint, Saint, Saint Francis also lay down on his bed. And this friend did not sleep. He, he was what? He, he was, he, he had to keep awake to watch what's happening. So he was feigning uh, sleep and sometimes he feigned snoring. <laughs> but St. Francis was lying still and then when this, when he was sure that he is snoring, my friend is snoring and there is no possibility of his detecting me, hmm. detecting me about the, the crime I am now going to <laughs> do. And what was that crime? The crime was this, that he sat straight on his bed and began to repeat, my God, my all, my God, my all, just as we do Japam with different names of God. Hmm? So that was his holy mantra. Hmm? In, 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 our, in our center, Sacramento Center, we we have a retreat area where we have put uh, images of some saints. So St. Francis, uh, one such image of St. Francis is there. And on the top of that, uh, we have written, My God, My All. See? And his famous prayer, uh, many of you must have uh, remembered his famous prayer, um, oh, oh Lord, make me an instrument of peace, like that. So the, this, this friend was awake and saw that he was absorbed, totally absorbed, and he was repeating, not too loudly, my God, my all, my God, my all, my God, my all. So naturally he was very, very much impressed. And in the morning they greeted each other and he did not s disclose that he had come as a detective. <laughs> but he was so much impressed that uh, he became a close friend and great helper in the 
because St. Francis, as you know, he wanted to build a church and all. He, had, he was also a man of action, besides being a contemplative. Now this expression, my God, my all, is, is really an expression, a powerful expression of, of cherishing love and devotion to God. Those who like what we call Bhakti Yoga, communion with God through, by Bhakti, Bhakti means devotion. Those who, uh, as you know, there are four Yogas, the path of knowledge and uh, the path of Karma, Karma Yoga, and the Raja Yoga, the path of concentration. So Bhakti Yoga, the communion with God through love, because love is such a natural force in every human being. Eh? As soon as we come out from our mother's womb and, and the baby opens its eyes and uh, looks around, looks the sky, and uh, looks his mother, looks at his mother slowly, he falls in love with, with uh, this world in which he, he forgets the period of darkness when he was, when the child was in the mother's womb. But now the child falls in love with this world. Hmm? We call it, spiritually speaking, this love is a sort of bondage. Hmm. We call it, uh, you have uh, come to this world, but gradually you will find that it is not all sunshine. Hmm. That, uh, if you, it depends upon the period of life you live, you will have to face uh, many difficulties. Uh, so, when you are a baby, when you are an innocent child, try to love everything. And the child does, as we know, when we watch the behavior pattern of a child, the child loves whatever he sees, and hears he wants to touch this, he wants to do this and do that, and that is the expression. Uh, of love we begin to experience even from our um, birth. As soon as we are born, we, we, love works in us. And that love goes on as we grow. We, our, we fall in love with many things. When we are uh, for going to school, uh, we have to fall in love with going to school, we fall in love with sports, <coughs> different games, and different friends, different relations, and slowly our, the tie of love binds us. Spiritually speaking, we say that is the, spiritually speaking, it is bondage. Yeah. If you, there have been, in Indian mythology, there is a very beautiful story about Sukadeva, who was a great saint, Sri Ramakrishna, you will find in the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna. He was mentioning uh, the name of Sukadeva. Uh, along with Sukadeva, he mentioned some other famous uh, ancient sages, uh, mythological, half-mythological characters like Narada, then Sant Kumara, and, but he gave a very prominent place to this uh, sage whose name was Sukadeva. He was the narrator of the Bhagavatam, 
it, it is a long story, I should not go into the details. Many of you, I believe, uh, know the story of Sukadeva. But it so happened, he was uh, uh, in his mother's womb. Uh, even then, he was a Gani. You see, he had full knowledge and he refused to be born. <laughs> uh, but the Almighty had a purpose uh, when he sends something to this world. Is a, the Almighty, the Almighty God, the all-knowing God who is responsible for um, creation. And so Sukadeva, he was, they say, he, he refused to be born. So, and he was in, in, in meditation. And for him, the dark uh, region of the mother's womb was not a very bad thing. Uh, the worst thing would be to come into this world and, fa and face all the difficulties of this world. Hmm? No end to human difficulties or sorrows or suffering, or contradictions in life, so he refused to be born. Then, in higher regions, in where the gods have their offices, you know, <laughs> they had a consultation. How to get this Sukadeva out of his mother's womb? Because he, he has a mission in his life. He has to do something great. And so if he confines, his, if he hides himself, conceals himself in his mother's womb, the, then the plan of God will fail. So they uh, requested the great mother, the Mahamaya, the Shakti of Brahman, who, who is behind this play of this world. Hmm? creation, preservation, and dissolution, the three movements, the three sides of this cosmic movement of life. Uh, things come, things stay, and things dissolve. It is going on from the, uh, from the beginning. Uh, we need not take too crit uh, critically the uh, the idea of the, the Bible that the world was created just <laughs> several thousand years ago. See? But according to the, 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 our Hindus, the world has no beginning. Hmm? But uh, uh, it has an end for the person who is blessed with, with having great love for God or knowledge of his true self, and then he, he, he is freed from this Maya. But till then, he surrounded Maya. Every day we are uh, inviting fetters around us, you see. So they, the gods requested Mahamaya, the great Shakti, the, the great mother, who is bringing us the Chandi, who is a book of, like Gita, the Chandi is the book for the Divine Mother. Hmm? So, and there are so many prayers there. So, their mother is extolled, that it is Mother Shakti, Mother's power, with whom God is doing all that He is doing. So they pray to Mother for, just for one moment, uh, one second or two seconds, you cast a spell on this boy who is uh, living in the womb. Mm. His, his father was, was a famous sage, Bhasa Deva, Bhasa, the sage Bhasa, who was the writer of 18 Puranas and who uh, was the uh, writer of the Gita and he was an ancient sage called Bhasa. So Mahamaya did that, cast a spell 
<coughs> on this child, on this boy. By that time he is 14 years old. <laughs> now how <laughs> he, he emerged from his mother's womb is a mystery. <laughs> it is for modern surgeons to investigate, to make research by what method <laughs> that child, 14 year old child, was to come to be born. <coughs> anyway, he was born. And as soon as he was born, <coughs> his two minutes were, uh, uh, were over. So he had his wisdom <coughs> and <coughs> he ran straight. The description we find in the Bhagavata Purana. After being born, he ran straight and his father began to run after him. Oh son, come back, come back, oh son. And very poetically, the, we have the description in the Bhagavata Purana. The father, Vyasa, he is running after this uh, son. Uh, oh son, please come back, please come back, don't go away, don't go away. And his voice was echoed <coughs> by the surroundings. Come away, come away, 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 <laughs> never hearing, yeah? like an echo. So then after some time, the Shukadeva, he thought, well, my father is a great jnani, is a great sage. So he is, I should not hurt his feelings. Though I know that I have to face the troubles of holding an earthly body. Hmm? So he came back. And then the, the, the uh, <coughs> God's plan began to work out. He was he became a student of his father, and the father taught him all the knowledge possible of the Vedantic knowledge, of, a knowledge of the Puranas, knowledge of life and death. <coughs> all these things he learned from his father. And there are many stories about Shukadeva, but the the image of Shukadeva in the Indian mind, mm -hmm. and so also in the mind of Sri Ramakrishna, was that he is the personification <coughs> of love of God and also knowledge of Brahman. <coughs> so Sri Ramakrishna would quote that Shukadeva, uh, people like Shukadeva, they had experienced God in so many ways and <coughs> it so happened that uh, he, after having his uh, <coughs> scriptural education from his father, his father <coughs> sent him to the King Janaka because King Janaka, though a king, though he was a householder, but he was renowned a jnani. He, he was a sage. And there are many examples of this <coughs> King Janaka. Sri Ramakrishna would often say to householders, if you uh, if you want the spiritual life, follow the, the life of this King Janaka. See, he, he had to rule a kingdom, so much responsibility. At the same time, he had the time for spiritual things, he used to meditate and teach mm, others. The Sukadeva was sent by his father. <coughs> I have taught you many things, now you, <coughs> as a demonstration 
of what I have taught, you go to King Janaka and you will see that uh, how he has put the Vedantic knowledge in his life. So Sukadeva went there and uh, found that Janaka, there were some uh, students, they were listening to Upanishads from the King Janaka. <coughs> At the same time, there was somebody shouted, there is fire, there is fire, there is fire. And King Janaka rushed to his palace, but these four or five brahmacharis, eh, they had, after their bath, they had uh, hung their loincloth, wet loincloth, the, the, in a rope, then in a line. And they rushed to save their loincloths. Hmm? Then Sri Ramakrishna said, you see, these Brahmins boys who, who had, uh, were supposed to live a life of austerity and not be drawn to, their only possession was their loincloth, two sets of loincloths. And when they heard about fire, they wanted to save that. But King Janaka, he was calm and quiet. He said, even if the whole of the kingdom of Mithila, that was the kingdom where he reigned, even if the whole kingdom of Mithila <coughs> burns away, <coughs> it does not affect me. Because he was so steadfast in his knowledge of self, that I am, I am the true self, the the eternal consciousness in this in this body, and so this is this story is an example of this. Uh, both Janaka and Shukadeva saw this. Then uh, what happened? The the uh, another age came the age of, we read in the Mahabharata, the story of the Pandavas and the Kauravas, they fought each other and <coughs> eventually they had, the Pandavas had to suffer exile for 14 years. Eventually they got back their kingdom and they died and then the, the king was Parikshit. Parikshit was a descendant of, of the Pandavas, a very pious king. But he had uh, offended the... Uh, you see, the story of the Purana is such that it's, it, it is like a, a forest, you see. You find one track, and that track leads to another track. You follow that track, it leads to another track. So the, uh, 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 at one stage, the, the, uh, the king was Parikshit. He was also a pious king. But he had offended uh, some sages and some... So they had cast him with the death. Eh? Within seven days he will die. And so this King Parikshit wanted to spend the last seven days of his life. <coughs> so effectively that his spiritual fulfillment is attained. That fulfillment is... Uh, evident in that expression I use, my God, my all. So he wanted to be immersed in God consciousness. He has to forget his kingdom, he is the emperor, everything he has to forget and direct all his attention, all his energy 
to that great thing that I have eh, nothing but God. God is my most precious treasure. And in order to uh, do this, he invited several holy men uh, who would sit around him and chant uh, from the Vedas so that a perfect, perfectly a holy atmosphere is around him. Now, they saw that from a distance a young man is coming, he looks like mad, and he is coming. That was Sukadeva. Sukadeva was wandering and wandering and spending his time and waiting for the call from God because he was told that he was born for a, a great mission. So he came to the scene and then King Janaka, uh, not King Janaka, Parikshit, King Parikshit and others recognized him. Here is our great sage. Uh, and then he approached the king and saluted him because he was the king. And the king said that this is my fate. I have been cursed that I have only seven days of my life. How I can spend these seven days most effectively? Then Sukadeva says, I will tell you the story of the, <coughs> the Bhagavatam, eh? the story of the life story of Sri Krishna and the life story of your ancestors and how uh, Sri Krishna came as a divine incarnation and fulfilled his mission. Th these stories I will go on telling day after day. And if you listen to these holy stories that your mind will be on God, you will feel that the whole universe is filled with God. Huh? God is not in a distant place, but God is sitting in the throne of your heart. And when you listen to this, my story, so Sukadeva began his story that is called Bhagavatam. See? <clears throat> and this Bhagavatam is the most important Purana. His father Vyasa was a prolific writer. He, <coughs> it was he who uh, wrote the Mahabharata. And Gita is a part of the Mahabharata. And other Puranas also is ascribed to the sage Vyasa. So it was the mission of Sukadeva's life to, to tell the story of Bhagavatam. Bhagavatam is not merely Sri Krishna's uh, story, but the story of many ancient sages, ancient kings. It, it, it is, that is why it is considered to be the most important Purana. Though there are 18 Puranas and all authorship is, uh, is uh, ascribed to the sage Vyasa. So that was Sukadeva. Now, Sri Ramakrishna said that it is very difficult for a person to attain self-knowledge, uh, to be a jnani. Uh, the Upanishads say the highest ideal of God is that God is the infinite beyond our body and mind, and God is our very self, the light, the flame that is burning in the heart, is that same infinite flame which is God. He is present everywhere in this universe. When we are ignorant, when we are under the spell of Maya, we see this multiplicity. We see the man, woman, eh, rich, poor, uh, white, black, all these 
manifold distinctions and differences <coughs> it is the play of maya so so each human being has to wear out his karma by living a life within the maya no escape uh, no escape from maya because each one of us has a past history and that is called our karma we are not born at a, just at a particular time but time has no limit from an infinite past uh, we are uh, going into body after body body after body this is called transmigration traveling from <coughs> one body to other and the scriptures say this is called uh, the uh, this transmigration is not for a spiritual seeker eh? it is not a blessing for some it may be a blessing because man has so many desires so many desires and how many desires he can accomplish in one life The, the 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 time limit of one life maybe 60 years 80 years or 100 years and and if you are fortunate and if you have money and if you are in a rich country then you can have uh, open heart surgery you can have transplantation of the heart <laughs> and the modern methods then you are but still there is no escape from death death is sure to come one day eh? so this life is not all sunshine at every stage when you are young when you are strong you feel that you are the uh, master of everything hmm? you are you are not hum- you have no humility but as you grow old and old one day you find your hair is t- turning gray another day pain in the back another day four simultaneously pain in four teeth hmm uh, if there is no end of human troubles and another day you find all your investment is gone that two banks both the banks have failed <laughs> and you had uh, four children two boys and they were just waiting t- till eight till they are 18 and when they are 18 then one son he says daddy mommy goodbye <laughs> <laughs> we are now free hmm. we can we can take care of ourselves and we shall occasionally come on mother's day and father's day <laughs> and see you you, you will prepare uh, uh, good food for us and we may not have the time to wash the dishes so that that also <laughs> that also we have to do out of love eh? Eh? and the second boy also says a similar thing and the daughter say you are now we are independent we, we will find our own husbands eh? like that the the joy of the uh, four children they, they when they were uh, little when they were young the father and mother was so happy but a time comes when the father and mother have to lose their children and not that is the universal case there are uh, exceptions but this is the state of our life it is not all good and all healthy as you grow older you feel the brunt of uh, this existence then you want to then you want to run away but where will you run away where is the place there is a place huh eh? for a devotee of god a, a person who has tasted spiritual life hmm? now this beginning of spiritual life can happen in many ways it can happen through some affliction some great shock when you hear that a person your dear dearest friend whom you believed so much has 
has committed uh, uh, something by which he has uh, a great loss of money. Like these great shocks of life we have, either from a person, either from a friend or from a wife, uh, uh, with great hope, a, 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 a person marries a, a girl, then the marriage lasts for three years, then we are tired of this marriage and have divorce. Then the story is repeated after six years, another wife. Eh? And is it a very happy situation? You see, we cannot play on with love. Love itself is some, something divine. And so a spiritual seeker should not be blindly engrossed in the world. Sense enjoyment or enjoyment of to, through the senses, which is very limited, we cannot uh, enjoy our sense life eternally. There is, there is a termination when we read the Katha Upanishad, the story of Nachiketa. He the king of death, uh, this boy, as you know, most of you, you will, uh, must have known this story from the, the lectures and classes. This uh, Nachiketa, he showed the fallacies of life. The king of death wanted to give him the plenty of uh, objects of amusement, but he denied that. He says, what you call life is very short, a short time, and it, it is filled with so many perplexities and finally death. How can you escape that? So I don't want, don't tempt me with this uh, gold or silver or women or all, I don't want anything. I want the answer to a question. And then the king of death, Yama, he is also the king of dharma, righteousness. He said, I will give you um, uh, an access to heaven, heavenly life. But no, I don't want anything of that. I want an answer to a question. What is that question? Well, I want to know what happens to man when he dies. Then he said, this is a very serious question. You are a little boy of twelve. It is not for you. Hmm. Take these toys, take this thing, that thing, and live as many years you want to live. Two thousand years maybe, I will give you that span of life. It is in my... Uh, because I am the king of dharma, I am the king of death, so you, uh, you can live a long, long, long life. Nachiketa says, no, I want the answer to this question. What happens to man <coughs> after he dies? And so this king of death, who is the speaker, teacher in the Katha Upanishad, eh, he began the topic of self-knowledge, how a man can discover within himself that great God. And normally we think that God is something external, who has created this universe and who is uh, maintaining this universe and who is dissolving this universe. Uh, but he heard from the mouth of Yama that the real God, the true God, is like a prisoner. He is within you. Eh? This body, this mind, this life principle, prana, these are the walls of this uh, prison. But if you are sincere, if you practice uh, meditation, if you practice love of God, uh, if you are ready to give up everything, 
there should be nothing that you can call your own. See, there now this uh, mantra of St. Francis comes, my God, my all. So there have been throughout history, there have been people, men and women both, who made that the ideal of their spiritual life. They, they found that they had enough of enjoyment, they had enough of uh, living a life of contradiction. So they are able slowly to uh, <coughs> bring their mind away from these things of temptations. And the whole world is no longer a, a great world for them. See? Because through their meditation, through their spirit of uh, renunciation, they experience the inner light, the inner joy, which is the joy of God. And they feel that this, what we call this universe, is nothing but God. Uh, whatever in ignorance I desired, that was only God. It was God that I desired through, if I had desired money, if I had desired children, if I had desired this or that, fame, in God there is everything. If I can love God, if I can find that light, eh, light of God within myself, then I do not lack anything. I, I am then, I see that this world is no longer Maya. Till I have found that God within me, then I am bound. I am bound by many, many fetters. I, I am imprisoned in this body-mind system. But that, I am a slave. But that miserable state uh, goes away when I, through my desire and through my uh, patience and perseverance, I begin to practice that mantra, my God, my all. Not that I have to run away from this world, but I have to declare that everything that I see, everything that I am attached to is nothing but God. I am surrounded by God. I am enveloped by God. God is within me, uh, outside me. Eh? Even in my body, every organ, every organ is operated not merely by the, the physiological processes, but by the great God who is within, who is consciousness. Vedanta calls that Satchidananda. Even my <coughs> six minutes the you go ahead, Mother, it's all right. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Even in this body, even in this body, the, the, our senses are operating, our different organs are operating, but really all this power, all this Shakti is coming from God. So I will, will pay my whole attention to, to God. Eh? I will say that my God, my all. My God is not a little God. My God is in the sky. My God is in all that I call beautiful. My God is in all that I call grand music. Eh? So my God is everywhere. My God is operating from his seat in my heart, within myself. This body belongs to God. And whatever power I have, the power of writing, or power of painting, or power of singing. Hmm. Every power is God's power. So if I can remember this, if I can re remember that 
really speaking my whatever i possess whatever i desire is already in god hmm? so if i can experience the love of god experience the presence of god within myself and outside myself then there is nothing to regret and even death does not uh, lo uh, death loses all meaning from uh, loses all meaning for me because god is eternal eh? my body may not be eternal everything that we see in this world uh, may not be eternal everything is doomed to extinction these three processes the thing, objects come objects stay objects go but i myself within who, who, who is a reflection of god god the eternal so i am not uh, i have no death i have neither birth nor death in the upanishads we read this inspiration and in the bhagavad gita in the, in the bible also the lord jesus christ says speaks of the soul what does a man profiteth if he gains the whole world but loses his own soul hmm the soul consciousness lord jesus christ was a great sage an illumined person if we read swami vivekananda's small pamphlet about lord jesus christ then we see that he was really living with the wisdom of god the love of god whenever he would say my father it was it, it it was an experience it was a divine experience and he wanted to each avatar each incarnation comes to give this message their language may be different eh? they come to give us a picture of a life which is not <clears throat> vitiated by the contradictions of maya hmm? a life that is always uh, uh, linked with god so that then we can say my god my all my god my all even when death comes we say is my god my all see that, that is a spiritual perfection uh, lord jesus christ in one place in the bible he said thou shalt love thy lord the god with all your heart with all your mind with all your soul that is the picture of uh, love of god uh, love of god uh, with every power in me i i shall love my god you see that is the great ideal of bhakti and sri ramakrishna said that if a person can develop love of god the knowledge of self hmm, uh, comes automatically to him he need not so sri ramakrishna very much stressed for the uh, common man a yogi who has time who has renounced everything he can go and to the himalayas and he can spend 10 years or 12 years but nothing will happen you see <laughs> because he has not been able to say my my la, my god my all ha huh? he has that egotism i am a yogi i am meditating and god is bound to come to me no god is not bound to come to you by compulsion hmm god by a, by a policeman's ticket hmm <laughs> so this 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 love can be practiced practiced slowly through our life through our actions through and if we can test that love then this world becomes a wonderful place of god we are not afraid of death we are not afraid of anything and we, we feel that all the time we are with god hmm god can never forsake me i cannot forsake god see that is the great uh, 
meaning of this simple theme of this mantra which saint francis uh, mm-hmm. was practicing similar mantra uh, uh, are practiced by other devotees of god uh, there are devotees indian devotees who is attached to uh, shiva or rama or krishna see in india the uh, who was responsible for indian independence mahatma gandhi you see he was shot hmm? he was shot he was going to a prayer meeting and one person a dogmatic person he thought this man is too saintly and the muslims are taking advantage of that so he should dis- he should not be here in this world then so he shot him and he, he was falling down as he was falling down he said hey rama <laughs> the name of god hey rama means eh? if if you translate that into in the saint francis's language my god my all so in our life eh? in our spiritual life <coughs> this experience does come <coughs> it has come to many and it will come to others and we who are very serious in spiritual life who have discovered the fallacies of the, the sense enjoyment sense life then this mantra this devotion you see that uh, the, the total devotion that is the great power and that is the great enjoyment and the great satisfaction in our life thank you om madhubata ritayate madhuksharanti sindhava madhirna santoshadi madhunaktan toshasi madhumat parthivam rajah मधुदौरस्तुना पिता मधुमानस्पति मधुमानस्तु सूर्य मधीर्गावो नोम मधु 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 स्वीट ब्लो दि वींस एंड दि वेरी ओशंस गिव फोर्थ ब्लेसडनेस मे दि आर्ब्स एंड प्लैंड्स ब्रिंग आस हेल्थ एंड हैप्पीनेस sweet unto us be the nights and dawns may every particle of mother earth be charged with blessing and may the heavens shower us with benediction sweet unto us be the noble forest trees sweet unto us be the shining sun sweet unto us be all living creation om sweetness harmony peace